it just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? For Bungie in the gaming world, like the hits just keep on coming. Like we got some new information dropping today, courtesy of Bloomberg, talking about Jason Schreier, an extremely reliable source. And the news today was that uh, <laughs> former Destiny lead and then Marathon game lead uh, Christopher Barrett was uh, actually terminated, right? He was fired. You know, we knew that he left. We thought that maybe it was sort of like a, a difference in creative uh, direction with uh, Marathon, and then they brought in the new guy to take his place. We never knew the details of, you know, what really went on behind the scenes with his replacement there at Bungie. And I always thought it was a little strange that somebody so high up didn't just get moved to a sort of lateral position within Bungie, but uh, left entirely when he got replaced. So it, it just sheds a lot more light on it. And it makes a lot more sense now. I will link the uh, Bloomberg article for you in the description. I'm not gonna show it on screen. It's not my work, it's not my article. So I highly recommend that if you're interested in this topic, please go read the article so that we can continue to support good journalism within the gaming community. And that's what Jason Schreier is very well known for. But in this article, it says that uh, Christopher Barrett was fired after an official internal investigation uh, you know, was launched on the heels of uh, several complaints from female co-workers who had complained that uh, his behavior was uh, inappropriate. So Chris Baird's been with Bungie for over 20 years. He had a lot of influence in the Destiny games, uh, Destiny 1, Destiny 2, and then obviously then, uh, you know, a lot of the development of Marathon as well. So he's definitely sort of made that climb to get where he was being one of the higher ups in the company. And as always, I, I always go into these things with a little bit of scrutiny, but Bloomberg reports that they actually got eyes on some of the text messages that he had sent to the female coworkers, and they agreed that they were flirtatious. They invite uh, extended invitations to come and hang out, things like that, which is definitely inappropriate for somebody in a position of you know, leadership, especially to be making invitations like that, it's a different dynamic than when it's just like your coworker who works in the cubicle next to you. Not the flirtation, I mean like invitations to hang out. Flirtation that crosses the line is inappropriate no matter where you are in the company, but especially when you're like making comments about your wealth and your status, which is what these uh, reports claim that he had done, and then you offer an invitation, it's, it's, uh, it adds a new element to it, it's very inappropriate. I gotta say this was completely shocking to me. Uh, Chris Barrett was a clan mate of mine for a long time in uh, Resolute, back before he was at such an elevated position, when he was uh, much further down the totem pole at Bungie back in Destiny 1. Back then, I had had no strange interactions with him. You know, we'd been in raids together with other female clanmates of ours and, and nothing ever seemed amiss there, no red flags. You know, you just wonder if people change and maybe they get more bold as they climb up the totem pole. Once they get a taste of influence and money. And you know, um, it it got to the point where we had actually, I don't know if you even remember this, but I had a, a podcast that we did for a couple of years uh, called Real Gamer Hour, uh, RGH. It was me, Cactus HD, and M Tashed. And we had even commented on some of the things that uh, Barrett had done online, where you have, like, within the same week, where they're talking about having to lay off employees at Bungie. Within the same week, he's posting pictures of the brand new Porsche that he bought his wife. And it just seemed really inappropriate and out of place, given the context of what was going on at Bungie for so many people to lose their livelihood and then a guy higher up to be like, brand new Porsche this week, baby. And so there were definitely some warning signs that maybe the growth to wealth and influence may have been affecting his character. Not that that's a scapegoat, as more as it is, is an explanation, not so much an excuse. You know, his rise can certainly explain the change of character. It doesn't, it doesn't excuse it at all. And so beyond just having the, uh, you know, Bloomberg having eyes on the text messages themselves and verifying uh, that they were inappropriate, we even have uh, a tweet from Tocom. This is interesting to me specifically. The, the, you know, Tocom used to be as part of the Crucible team at Destiny 2. He then got moved over to Marathon. He's like the runner team lead over at Marathon. So he would have been working directly for Chris Barrett. And today he just tweets out uh, the Kermit the Frog meme sipping tea, which is definitely not, hey, I'm defending this guy. Hey, I worked for this guy for years. Hey, I can vouch for this dude. It was more like a, yup, 
not surprised by this sort of a reaction. And then if you rewind a couple of months, we even had, I think it was about a month and a half ago, uh, Liana, who used to be a you know, community manager there at Bungie, had tweeted out, Chris Barrett was not a nice person, which came out of the blue. It was strange to me. I took notice of it. I remember uh, sending a, a, a picture of that DM to the guys from RTH being like, what is this about? What, what did we miss? And this now sheds even more light on that. So obviously uh, other people in the studio were very uh, well aware of these allegations, very well aware of his behavior, and had nothing to say in his defense. And it's not just women, it was dudes too. What does this mean for Marathon? What does this mean for Bungie? Nothing, he's gone. He hasn't been there uh, for a while now. He has no influence there anymore. So definitely it won't have any bearing, no pun intended there, bearing. Uh, But it has no bearing on the future of the franchises uh, at all at this point. But what it does do is it sets a great precedent for, hey, you can't be doing this stuff. And if you do this stuff, there's gonna be repercussions, there's gonna be investigations, you're gonna lose your job. You know, hopefully this is a continued shift within the industry to make sure that it's not just a boys club at the top and that we're rooting that bull crap out of the industry because we don't want it there. Now, unfortunately, as I saw this coming a mile away, um, we knew that this would provide an open door for people to come to the defense of other creeps historically that this dude had called out. And it wasn't Chris Barrett only, but obviously Chris Barrett was on board when we had uh, allegations you know, of a well-known streamer many years ago who had been inappropriate with uh, other peers of his. And Chris Barrett was like, yeah, man, that's not cool. Obviously now we know that's pretty hypocritical but it doesn't excuse this other guy's behavior. And unfortunately, we're seeing this giant surge of people be like, yeah, this is vindication for so-and-so. But no, it freaking is not. You cannot tell me. And this is, this is my belief, right? And you are certainly welcome to believe what you want to believe about that scenario. But you cannot tell me that the dude who came out and immediately was like, I'm so sorry I did this stuff, and then deleted it and said, I, I didn't do that stuff. Totally didn't do that stuff. You cannot tell me that somebody accidentally admits to doing stuff. Like, you don't just accidentally say, oh, yeah, I totally did that stuff and I'm so sorry. You don't do that if you didn't do it. You say, oh, my gosh, I don't know, guys, I don't know where this stuff is coming from. And, you know, I'm sorry that this is happening right now. Let me get my ducks in a row and and let you know, you know, my side of the story. That's what you say if you did not do it. At least that is my personal belief. Not to mention before those events, I had had multiple conversations with women who are peers of mine who had been sharing their experiences uh, privately. And uh, the, they were friends of mine, people that I trust. I mean, you don't just like not believe your friends when they tell you something happened. You know what I mean? What kind of a friend are you if you if you don't stand up for your friends and believe them when they tell you things are happening, especially when it's multiple of them? So much so that when one of those things happened during a, a, you know an event hosted by a certain children's hospital nonprofit, they banned this individual from being on their premises. He's not even allowed on their premises. At least that was the report at the time. So anyways, please do not use the inappropriate actions of one individual to excuse the inappropriate actions of another individual. Now again, believe what you wanna believe. I'm not gonna go out there and say that my beliefs are always 100% factual, but they are my beliefs, and that's where I stand on them. Inappropriate behavior is inappropriate no matter who you are, and no matter how many other people are doing that same thing. At the end of the day, I think that we are responsible as a community to weed out people who would abuse their positions, influence, money, wealth, whatever it may be, to take advantage of their co-workers, women or otherwise. And I certainly hope that Bungie is able to set a new standard within the studio for what is okay and what is not okay. At the end of the day, the healthier the studio is and the community and the atmosphere within those walls, the better the product that they're going to be able to ship for all of us to enjoy. And that is that. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section what you think about all this, how you think it might affect the gaming industry or Bungie. I will say kudos to the studio for actually doing an investigation and doing their due diligence and taking action when they feel it was needed. Be warm and well-fed, my friends, and hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.